Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <clears throat> testing, testing. You good? Everything's good? You good too? Yeah, I think so, Gabe. She, Gabe. How do I sound? <laughs> it sounds like fingers on chalkboard to me, but that's just because I've known you for 10 years. <laughs> um, you could only hear how your voice sounded in my head. <laughs> but I'm kind enough not to say it out loud. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm blunt. I'm a D personality. You're an I personality. I'm a D personality. I know. So I'm dying inside from your jab at me. Just twist the knife. I'm joking. You dying. know I love you. I'm Josh Sigmund and I'm a mortgage lender. I'm also a geek for money, not just earning it and saving it, but literally everything about it. I love that money has rules. It has its truths. I love investment strategies and I love making money work for us. For so many, money is emotional. For me, it's logical, like a puzzle. My passion is also helping others with their money. I love looking at people's finances, dissecting their puzzle, and rebuilding with strategy and purpose, and I'm really good at it. I'm making this podcast about my money strategies, not the things that are written in books or sold in programs. It's a podcast outlining the lessons I've learned and used for the past 15 years. These strategies help me and those who use them save more, give more, create wealth, and retire early. Let me teach you how to build your net worth. You ready? Welcome to Sigmund Sense. Well, this is welcome back to Sigmund Sense, and this is now uh, celebrating is like, the end of uh, year one and into yes. year two, right? So this is like season two. Season two, yeah, which is, is really exciting. January, I can't believe it's January. I know, I know. It's kind of unbelievable. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm super excited. Um, you know, I, I just I love the beginning of the year because Why? it's oh, it's just such a fresh start, like. You know, who you, says everything's dead outside? It's cold. Um, n- not in my heart and mind. My heart and mind is very warm and flowery. Um, well, you're planting seeds. That's the goal, right? I just love, you know, I like the beginning of things. I like the beginning of the school year. I like the, you know, the beginning of the year because it's just a time to like clear out all the cobwebs from your head and put new plans in place and tweak old plans, keep going. And I just lovely. You know, it's funny. That sounds like you like the first uh, inning of the World Series or the first quarter of uh, of like a hockey or a first period of a hockey game. I like to watch the finale. I like to watch. I mean, I like, like the finale how, too. I want to know how it ends. Like, do we hit it? Do we make it? Do we hit our goals or not? Yeah, that's fun too. <laughs> that's super fun too. Um, but, but it just, it feels so good from an organizational place. I mean, it's just a time to be like, you know, because we, I don't know, I've been like cleaning out, you know, all the drawers and closets and... Have you decided on your New Year's resolution yet? Um, well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anything worth sharing? <laughs> Trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, yeah, we have all sorts of fun stuff. So um, basically, we kind of just went around the wheel of life that we talk about so much. And one thing we did differently, and um, we actually did this in October, Randy and I did, was a family wheel of life. So he and I sat down and- Family went, goals. Yeah. we And we basically put together a business plan for the family. What was the biggest thing on it? Like what stuck out to you the most? Um, what stuck out to, okay. What stuck out to me the most was that our wheel was the best it's ever been. Oh, that's exceptional. I'm glad to hear that. And we have made, we have been, we've worked really hard in a lot of areas and made some real progress. So when we put plans in place this time around, it was way more exciting because it was an amped up version of the same things that we'd been doing. And I don't know that we've ever had that feeling before, you know, dreaming it's, bigger, a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely. I think it's because we have had so much traction that it, it felt more tangible and real right. to say, well, hell yeah, we can put whatever we freaking want on here because look at the work that we've done. You had some done. Uh, positive re- uh, reinforcement that was happening. 100%. Yeah, so it was really fun. It was That's- really fun. And I can 
I can definitely say Randy and I have never had that transparent of a conversation before. And we've been married for 12 years without fighting or arguing. Like that's. It doesn't sound like it was a totally transparent conversation. (laughs) I swear it was. I swear it really was. Uh, We literally left because we, you know, we made a little staycation out of it. And so we went to a hotel and just really enjoyed ourselves. And um, when we left the next day, we were like, well, hot diggity, look at us. Like, did that just really happen? Like, we're so, we're so adult. We didn't fight. I mean, Randy even said things like, that's a really good perspective to look at. I'm like, (laughs) wow. That's awesome. (laughs) So yeah, um, I'm really excited about this year. I'm really excited about this year. Well, I'm excited about this year for a different reason. It's actually what our topic is going to be about today. Um, I'm excited for a redo. Yeah. So we're going to call this episode the redo year is what I want it to be called. Uh, And I want to explain the thought process, right? So God knows that everyone in the world, certainly America, was dealt some really crazy blows last year. Yeah. Um, So let's kind of give a quick rehash of it, right? So outside of the most recent plague to hit the world, right? Um, lots of businesses were shut down, but on the flip side, there were lots of businesses that enjoyed prosperity, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there were, uh, people didn't travel very often. Uh, but so people started buying houses and moving because they couldn't go anywhere. Uh, you had consumer spending hit, you know, 50% of what it normally was back in April because people were hoarding Mm -hmm. and like, oh my God, I can't even get toilet paper, let alone, you know, where's the next meal going to come from? All the way to, you know, consumer spending back in November was uh, within 5% of pre-pandemic, right? So you've got this, these wild fluctuations in employment and uh, go back to savings and spending, right? You know, mm-hmm. people weren't sure if the next paycheck was going to be coming in. Right. So they were actually saving for the first time in many years. Back to, you know, spending, you know, Black Friday turned into a... Uh, Cyber Monday for 30, 45 days <laughs> right. because everyone's learned how yeah. to work remotely, right? You've got companies that weren't on the map really, or at least weren't widely used, like uh, Zoom. I mean, um, that all of a sudden, you know, I've got 85 year old, you know, couples mm-hmm. that are doing Zoom meetings with me. You've got. But don't you find it interesting that yeah. bef- that pre pandemic, pre COVID, really the, the most popular company for that space for the virtual environment was Skype? Don't you think like, I mean, that to me, that was Skype was the go to yep. for so long. And like, where, I haven't heard of it. Where did you go? Like and yeah. Zoom just boom, came off the map. I yeah. mean, came in with a vengeance. Yeah. And there's so, so many other things, you know, you go down the list of just big winners and like things that didn't make sense. All of a sudden, they you know, the stock market rebounded uh, there you know, the last 90 days of the year. I mean, in a big way, um, mm-hmm. you know, where. You're talking about companies that you would have bet were going to go out of business that that made profits in stock market. Uh, you know, obviously vaccinations are a big piece of it. So, uh, what was it? December the, I want to say it was December the seventh time frame. The very first woman got vaccinated in the UK, right? So the UK uh, bought you know Pfizer's vaccinations first. Obviously, I think a lot of people know about this now. And so the very first, I think she was 91 years old, right? So. Wow. Um, it was a big deal. Yeah. You know, it's going to take many, many moons for everyone to get vaccinated. It's going to take many, many moons for the herd immunity sure. to come around. But uh, let's talk about presidential shifts. You know, mm-hmm. that's a big change year over year. I mean, so there's all this this craziness that goes on in the world. And yet, uh, as always, the world turns one more time. The year turns over. And that's, that's right. my favorite thing about time is no matter what, no matter how bad it seems it's going to be right now, uh, one day we'll be, we'll be in the rearview mirror. This so too shall pass, right? I want, yep, that's what my dad taught me years ago. So mm-hmm. I want to focus on the reader year because here's why. Uh, is COVID gone today? No, it's not gone today. Um, is there going to be more pain and stress with businesses uh, and loss of jobs and re, or let's just say change management within organizations that has to happen because of whatever, some states are are back at work, some states aren't back at work. Right. Um, there's a lot of change management that happens. What I would suggest though to the audience is that the initial shock and awe is over. Yeah. Like that initial oh shit moment of, I cannot believe my city told me that I've got to stay at home for an unknown period of time right. that we all experienced back in March. 
or even having a curfew. Or having a curfew. And, and let's be clear that things like that are still happening. will probably sure. keep happening per- periodically because it's not over yet. But the like, if my city gets shut down again tomorrow, I'm not going to be that surprised. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be that concerned because I've already been through it before. So I kind of I mean, know what to expect. So yeah. the reason why I think this is a cool subject, because this equates to everything. Finances, of course, is what the purpose of the conversation is. But there's so many other areas that we can delve into about if I had the opportunity to go back and redo 2020, mm-hmm. what would I do differently? Like, Man. Like, just look back in the rearview mirror. Such and, a powerful question. And I think it's a great business question. So any mm-hmm. business should be doing this. I think it's a great personal health question because I think... A lot of us got the freshman 40 back. I mean, I mean. <laughs> um, I, I see you nodding. Yep. Um, <laughs> I, I think that. You did not gain. Right. Um, there's, uh, I know for my example, for me, I didn't take a trip with my family till October. Yeah. Right. September, I think it was. So literally February the 13th of March, I was on spring break and we never went back and work became fast and furious. Thank God I was in the industry that, that right. did well. Right. And I didn't take a vacation until October. And I missed a, a summer vacation with my kids. And I've got like four of them left with Aubrey. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of Luckily, things Luckily, you were go stuck down. in the house with her for a lot of days. I got a lot of quality time. Yeah, time. I got a lot of quality time. So there's things I wouldn't change either. But <laughs> sure. I think that that's what I want everyone to write down for a second that's listening is if I could redo 2020, yeah. what would I do differently? And so what I what I thought we'd start with, let's start with money because the money conversation. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't, I'd be curious, you know, I want to give you a minute or two because I can throw 50 off the top of my head. If you want to write down a couple ideas, I'll ask you in a second of if you could redo 2020, what would you do differently? I'll go first. And okay. I think that I, I think, well, this just knowing a lot of people, um, here's what's going to happen. Will the stock market dip again at some point? Yes, it's going to. Um, I bet you a lot of people wish they didn't sell out of the market when the stock market fell 10, 15, 20% back in March and April. Why? Because I mean, yeah. they lost their ass and they missed out on one of the best runs in the last decade. I know. And right? I feel like we had a lot of conversations about yeah. that. And we even did a podcast episode about it. And yeah, I mean, could not have, I mean, I feel like we communicated really well. One of the things I'm very proud about it, uh, as far as the Sigmund team goes, was our communication through COVID. And that was one of the things we were just mm-hmm. shouting it from the rooftops. Don't sell, you know, don't panic yet. Don't, don't panic, s- yeah. You know, and... It was the classic V-shaped recovery. I mean, that's what it was. We talked about that in an episode yeah. like early on. But um, so so here's what, what was different. So let me tell you what were some areas that I did well in, right? So, uh, you know, one of the things that that smarter people than me say is, you know, be greedy when people are fearful and be fearful when people are greedy. And so um, when Southwest Airlines, along with all airlines, tanked back in March, April, and May, I bought a whole lot more. And I ended the year up 20%. And that's better than the average year in in the Dow, right? Uh, When Disney, uh, you know, crapped a brick in the first quarter and second quarter, and then I was starting to re- actually it was my team. It was it was you guys that were telling me, "Hey, there's this new thing called you know Disney Plus." Oh, I was yeah. thinking about. I was like, "Well, shoot, Disney's pretty good at everything they do. They've got a lot of time on their hands. They're probably gonna make Disney Plus go really well." Yeah, I bought a lot of Disney at the bottom. There and you I made go. over twenty percent. And so you know, some things I think about are uh, some misses though. I was using Zoom because my industry every single day since before the pandemic happened. And I didn't invest in Zoom until late in the year. Yeah. And I think back, I was like, man, like that's something I would do a redo on. I would, I, so I, I would think a little bit faster about, okay, here's our new world that we live in. Mm-hmm. What areas are probably going to do pretty well? Um, because there's a lot of opportunity out there that we can miss if we don't just think for just a minute. You know, uh, one thing I did very well on, I'm sure you guys have all heard of Pfizer at this point. Um, when there was whispers of possibly having a, a vaccine, I bought a lot of it. I did extremely yeah. well on it. Extremely, extremely well. Mm-hmm. So if from a money perspective, I'm not giving stock advice because I'm not licensed to do so. So this is not giving you advice. What I am saying though is that I will be more curious about my surroundings and pay better attention to what products and companies will most likely thrive if I really have a redo year, right? Like I think in terms of some basics, 
with all the people doing bulk buying, like at my ranch, I remember I had a freak out moment uh, before March, fr- Friday the 13th of March. And my buddy Jeremiah and I went for three days in a row back and forth to HEB, our local grocer. And I literally, there's a picture of me dragging in front of me. I've got a full topped off with canned goods. Uh, and then behind me, I've got a whole nother one of like beans and rice and stuff like that because a little bit of a freak out. And Jeremiah did too. And we did it for three days in a row. And so guess what? Uh, bulk buying was real through the pandemic. Yeah. Costco did very well. Sam's Club did very well. So yeah. when you start to think, uh, how about uh, any cleaning company? Mm. Clorox. Yeah. <laughs> like, Hand where, where do we all, right, where, where do we miss all these? The guy who made the I first mean, mask company. I need to figure out this one. I like, mean, who was the first one that really did widespread the, mask distribution? No but, kidding. Like, there's some obvious things that we miss that in a redo year, I'm going to pay closer attention to. My brother and I talked about, we had this conversation during the pandemic, and we talked about, you know, all the restaurants when they were allowed to open back up at whatever capacity, um, you know, had to use plastic cups, plastic plates, oh, yeah. salt and pepper, you know, everything had to be paper. And so we were like, man, is there, a, who's the paper company? Who's the plastic company that's supplying all, you know, that's all so the restaurants true. with? I mean, there's like one thing that's funny. Uh, it's a weird, like examples of things that have probably changed permanently. Um, the last five restaurants I've been to did not have menus. I know. Who does the little codes? I don't. Is there somebody getting like I was just thinking about that? Like those little bar, those things you scan to pull up the menu. You know, it's so interesting because when QR codes came out, they were like all the rage, right? And then they vaporized. Then they went away, and man, talk about being back. I'm back. I'm back. I see my opening. Yeah. So, so when I think about that, you know, the question for everyone that's listening, you write down a few things: is where were some obvious misses of things that you did with or or didn't do with your money that you wish you had done sooner, right? it still blows my mind that there's some people in the United States that still have five and four percent interest rates. If right. you should have refinanced by now, like, well, and that's, that's one of the things that I wrote on. down, like um, as what I would have done better or what I would do mm-hmm. better is I would have taken better care of my friends and family and my sphere of influence, hmm. and Makes sense. and really building a trust with them uh, on whatever platform, you know, maybe it's uh, setting up an email to my personal people that, you know, anyways, over time I could build, keep them informed. Um, You know, I had the question, somebody asked me the question at one point, how are we supposed to know who, who is supposed to tell us this information that it's time to refi and who's, you know, where are we supposed to be getting that? And the answer is, well, me, like I, you know, that's, my yep. job. And but I think what happens is people are uh, hit from so many different directions uh, as far as solicitation, specifically the, around refinancing and rates, yep. that they don't know who to listen to. Yep. Because is it a sales pitch? Is it a gimmick? Is it, you know, bait to to pull me in? And so that's something that's in the forefront of my mind is building a really solid foundation of the trusted advisor in this space for my friends and family. So that way um, I can make sure I take good care of them because when they, when they call me and say, Hey, I want to see, should I refinance? I'm like, what's your rate? Oh, it's in the fives. I feel like an asshole. I'm like, man, like none of my friends and family should be sitting around with five and a half percent interest rates. (laughs) They really shouldn't. So where have they been for the last five years? But we're not educating them. That's that's, that's right. That's, that's right. You know, it's and yep. and, and laying the groundwork of trust first, yep. not just hey, you know, it's time to refinance. You know, you got to earn that trust and yep. build it, and so that the, that way there's no question yep. when it's time, and you say it's time to go. They say okay. Right. And don't feel any hesitation about that. Right. Um, so anyways, that's something I would do better. Well, let's talk about some money with business too. Um, cause I, I think we can re- reel off five or 10 of those pretty easily. You know, one thing that was very obvious to all of us, uh, early on is, uh, when you think about businesses, so this could be, you could apply towards personal family budgets too, very easily. Um, but how few people had the, the adequate reserves to be fine without a paycheck for 10 weeks? Like that's, do you a, know that a, number? Uh, I don't have an exact number. There, you know, stats are one of those things that if you abuse them and torture them long enough, they'll tell you whatever you want to to say, right? But there, are way, I mean, let's just go down the 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 road. I, I read, I did read an article in late December that said that the average renter, um, the average renter has less than two months rent 
available to spend right now. Um, now, whether that's true or not, mm -hmm. I don't know. Here's why I do know is there's a whole lot of people that had to do forbearances on mortgages yeah. because they couldn't make their mortgage payment. Um, there's some other people that took advantage of it, but that's not the point. There were people that had to. There's a whole, there's thousands and thousands of small businesses and medium-sized businesses that went out of business literally because the cash flow stopped and they didn't have the reserves available. Um, and there was lots and lots of families that were like, I can't imagine. And so my heart goes out, like I actually feel empathy in this area. I can't imagine relying on the damn government to send oh out gosh. those extra checks that they did I mean, a couple times last yeah. year. Uh, and there were thousands of, uh, or not thousands, millions of Americans that there was no other way to buy food than to get mm -hmm. the, the checks that were sent by the government and the bailouts, yeah. right? And so what that tells me really simply is whatever you were doing before the pandemic, that shit didn't work, it didn't work. right? Save, got to save something. Yeah. Like no matter what your income is, save something, save something, save five bucks is better than yeah. saving zero, right? Yeah, because we don't know when the next little disruption is going to happen, but we do know disruptions will come. They always come. That's one thing history will, will repeat itself over yeah. and over. There'll be another war. There'll be some more chaos. There'll be some burned down city or home. There'll be some, there's going to be a lot of chaos. So the savings for business, the savings mm -hmm. for personal, you know, uh, I think early on in March, I had said uh, to everyone, if you were, if you're normally budgeting six months survival number, you should go to 12, go to 12. right? And I still stand by that. I think that the, it's not over yet. Um, you know, we're going to see how our, our new president, our new Senate and our new house steer the country moving forward, regardless yeah. who you voted for. It's our new president. It's our new house. It's our new Senate. And, uh, so we need to back them and see, see where we go from here. But, um, it's, well, it's, such a, it's, you know, it's either if you went into the pandemic and were hit with some really uncomfortable circumstances, mm -hmm. it's either going to like give you the slap in the face that you need to fix, you know, to fix it. Um, and or, let me, or, or like, whoa, glad that's over, you know, whoo, not going to happen again. Right. And right. just kind of more of the same. Denial um, is what that's called. Yeah. Um, and, and it's hard to find a starting point. And so if you are that person, if you know that person cool. that just doesn't really even know where to begin, send the podcast to them. Like, uh, you know, I think we've done a good job of putting content together that really builds out the stepping stones that people can take. Um, and there's content for days, but let me tell you the other thing. If you had been working your butt off and it paid off mm -hmm. in the pandemic and you were able to feel that sense of, wow, like that's what I was doing all that hard work mm -hmm. for. Um, man, is that like some serious motivation. It's very satisfying. To, to keep, to stay the course and keep going yep. or even amp it up. Um, and we had that feeling with when Weston was diagnosed with type one and then again with the pandemic, um, two opportunities where things could have been really, really tough and we were able to navigate the waters. Yep. So it's like, okay. You know, well, it's people are either paralyzed or propelled by fear. They're mm -hmm. paralyzed or propelled. So if you were paralyzed too long this last time around, like um, people that were furloughed, right? There are a lot of people that I know that were furloughed for an uncomfortable period of time. Rather than just assume the good nature of companies that they're going to hire you back, not all companies did. Right. Freaking day one, find a job. Like mm -hmm. day one, find something to do. Um, I ran across I an article um, and I would actually love to do this as a podcast, but um, we, you and I don't have a ton of firsthand experience with this. So I would want mm -hmm. to definitely pull somebody in. But it was an article of 20 um, outside of the box ways to earn money mm -hmm. in off times. And it was all sorts of things like taking surveys online, mm -hmm. um, writing the Closed captioning yep. on, you know, that you see on TVs and movies and whatever. Little things like that. Um, you can be an audible reader. Like you can yep. be the person that reads. And uh, so anyway, stuff like that. And I thought that would be interesting because I think this is a time where, you know, people are settling into the fact that, wow, okay, maybe I'm not going to be hired back. Right. And what do I do? Or <clears throat> how do I protect myself from the risk of being let go if, right. you know, if my market doesn't get better? And some of those unconventional outside of the box yep. ideas. Well, and, and that's in the redo year. Like one thing that I, I think that everyone should pay really close attention to is if you were at, at risk of losing your job or you lost your job and you didn't take advantage of cross training or learning new skills mm -hmm. the last few years, this would be a year to start learning new skills and cross training. 
Like, I love that on my team, there was about a half a dozen girls who weren't going to lose their job, but a half a dozen girls that in the last 90 days have vocalized that, you know, hey, I'd like to learn this job skill. I'd like to cross train with this person on the team so I'm more valuable to the team. And that is the right answer, mm -hmm. right? Like, um, I really, truly believe we're growing or dying. And so getting settled and comfortable in general, I think is a mistake because uh, when you're growing, you're kind of always looking for the next obstacle to overcome, the next hurdle to try and jump over. And when you just kind of sit there and let the world happen to you, the world will happen. The world's not always a nice place, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so when I go down that list of, you know, when I think about redo things, um, people should save more, period. Debt reduction when possible is, is uber important and makes making better buying choices, right? So uh, the, the pandemic forced people to make better choices because they or initially they couldn't spend money. Like Gabe, you couldn't go out and go buy food or go to the bar or go to the restaurant if you wanted to. So shit, you learned how to cook, right? And a lot of us did. Um, just be slow to go back to normal. <laughs> Right. I mean, yeah. Um, another thing, though, I don't I know. The curbside deals were really good, and I'm pretty sure that well. was. <laughs> but remember, that will be in the redo plan. Yep. Uh, well, also, there's now a drive-through <laughs> alcohol, which is kind of interesting. Uh, that will probably not change beverage either. Barn. A beverage barn, right? Which, by the way, investing in alcohol and that did very well, and and typically in scary times, that does very well. Um, my, uh, oh, you just made me. Th uh, I was about to say something very, very negative, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> So, uh, Negative. uh, but by trying to go down that same line of questioning, right. Then, then you go to, uh, if savings isn't enough and debt's not enough, then one thing that I would highly encourage people to do is find your no man. Who's the person that's going to this year, if you're going to mm -hmm. spend above X, yeah, they're literally going to say, Hey, is this a good idea? Yeah. Right? Like, uh, we've talked about that in the previous podcast, but I really highly subscribe to it. So I'm actually personally, uh, just bought a piece of property myself and um, and I can definitely afford it and I know what the mortgage is on it and all those things mm -hmm. and I and I still deferred to a realtor's advice yeah I still had somebody else do my loan in my company not myself um, <laughs> like I still asked lots of questions sure? and at the end of the day I went to my financial boss uh, who's a coach of mine and said please tell me if I'm being an idiot right now right? So, so I guess you said, no, you're not being an idiot. Not being an idiot. So the whole there point of me saying that though, is that regardless what your income level is, like sometimes it's better to have somebody that looks from the outside in and says, yeah, it's really probably not a great idea. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you didn't do that last year or the previous year, maybe that's something that you can look into. Uh, what else did you come up with? I've got a few more. I don't want to monopolize the whole time. Uh, so one, <laughs> I wish we would have uh, jumped on the gun to travel. Um, like, oh, dude, the opportunity the last oppor summer. I mean, I mean, like. Anyone that I, owned I, a VRBO did very well. Yeah, I wish we would have been positioned to rent our house out, put that baby on Airbnb, whatever, and hop in an RV and travel. That's something that Randy entered our marriage wanting to do is get really? in an RV and like, yeah, travel cross country like that. He's always wanted to do that. And the opportunity was just there. staring us right in the face because the kids were out for summer vacation. Yep. I was working fully remote and, you know, Randy, you know, same thing. So it's like, anyways, that was a huge opportunity. I wish we would have been prepared for. Yep. Um, My buddy Carson uh, called me up and said, Hey, I, I just decided I'm going to go to Colorado or football season for his oldest son was canceled last minute in August. So I'm going to go up to Cal uh, Colorado and rent a house for a month. I'm work from there. I sat there. I thought, like, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I do yes, that? that's a great redo. Yep. Why didn't I that's do that? That's a redo. Um, but, you know, the thing is you have to be prepared to be able to pull the trigger that fast. You have finances and, to back it. Right. Yep. And so what are those things that we need to put in place this year so that way the next time the opportunity presents itself we can really capitalize on that there's just yeah so that that was a really big one um i wish i would have encouraged the kids to learn a new skill um, like what like not fortnite like not fortnite by the way i had wesson teach me how to play fortnite it is so hard like it's really hard <laughs> Like really hard. Wait, wait, wait. Six-year-olds can play that game. Why is it so difficult? It's so hard. I mean. No, we're not going to go down this path. Just, Fortnite is a devil. It is so hard. Um, 
<laughs> so, okay. What, uh, example, uh, guitar. So Weston oh, yeah. has been wanting, he has mentioned sporadically over the years, about three or four times that he wants to learn how to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. And I wish I would have encouraged him to get on YouTube and learn. And then when the world opens back up, if he was able to commit and handle that stuff on his own and show the initiative, we could have easily plugged in a teacher to come over and take the, you know, take it from there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wish I would have encouraged that more. And, uh, so every year, you know, we, um, do a campaign for type one diabetes and JDRF. And I, I had way bigger plans for this year's campaign that I did not capitalize mm -hmm. on. Um, and I think, I think it was just a huge miss and, you know, I can give, I can give every excuse under the book and, and half of them are pretty legitimate, but the reality is it wasn't uh, a priority. It, it wasn't a priority. Yep. Um, it was, it's it's just, funny that you said that because uh, one of the things I've, so basically every food bank in the nation is struggling. Basically every charity out there, it needs extra money mm -hmm. and be really clear. There is wealth transfer, but not everyone did poorly. There's a whole lot of people in America that did extremely well, extremely well. with the circumstances, sure. with all the companies we just talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, just go down the, the list, you know, some breakout companies like Tesla, um, just the huge earnings year and people made lots of money with those companies, right? So guess what? There's still phil philanthropy on a lot of people's hearts. Absolutely. And if asked, people write big checks. And nobody and so was asking. Not, that, not that enough was... people were asking. That's exactly right. Right. And, and so- my, uh, I want to tell you something that's really extraordinary. So- uh, I'm part of this group called The Core, and The Core uh, is like a coaching program for lenders and realtors, right? And um, our giving as a group of people was up 50% year over year, up 50%. It's just so incredible. So, and I hope that that is marketed yeah. big time well, through the in the core and part of their messaging because that is like... It was incredible. You know, you had two people that gave over a million bucks individually, right? Okay. So when you think about that, they're going back to a good challenge for your redo is like double your goal for type one for 2021. I mean, and not right? double this year. It needs to be double, double again. 2019 right. goal at 42, right? right. Like Just double it. There's so, there's so much opportunity. And, and I think we could have collaborated with other organizations that um, we really could have, been, could yep. have had an impact, not just on the diabetic community. We could have, we could have really spread our reach. Yep. Um, but well, I wasn't prepared, and that's the that's that's really the point, right? Is I was not prepared enough to be able to execute in a moment where my day job was all consuming. Right, it's so I I couldn't. I couldn't de I couldn't stop long enough mm -hmm. to put plans in place. Had they been in place, I could have executed really easily regardless of how busy work was. Right. And so that's the Well, it's interesting to me because uh, one of the things you said there is part of what I want to do for my redo year and I'll explain it in a second, but uh I was talking to a client of mine uh that in the month of December, so so his wife is a registered nurse. And I don't know if he ever heard this. I don't know if it hit the reels. But the hospital staff is so overwhelmed and it's the holiday season. Hospitals in San Antonio are currently paying a $500 per day bonus to keep enough nurses to take care of all the sick people, right? Wow. Which equates to like $41 an hour or whatever it came out to on top of everything else. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when, when you look at like those types of things, that's fantastic until you freaking fall over from exhaustion. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so when I look back at, at, um, or you get sick. our, our, or, or you, you get, get sick. sick, our industry has, you know, clearly did very well. Anything real estate, lending, building world, construction in general crushed it in 2020. It'll probably crush it for a, a, a while longer. Uh, one thing that I was really clear of is the burnout level of my employees. So you just talked about how you couldn't even give to your charity. That's right. the most important thing because yeah. you're probably working 60, 70 hours. Uh, I know that I was working well over that some points of the year. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I look at my team in general and it's like, you know, we want to help as many people as you can, but you got to take care of yourself first to give better service to everybody else. So mm -hmm. one thing I want to do is I want to limit overtime period in the story. Like uh, I want to... Um, 
for the first quarter as an example, not allow more than uh, 10% overtime. So if you're 40 hour a week, can't get more than four hours overtime, yeah. period, end of story. Like that's what you're approved for. Everything else can wait till tomorrow and we'll figure it out as we go. And I think it's even more important in our industry in the second quarter because most people buy and sell real estate, you know, especially people with kids that have schools in that second and third quarter. Right. But I want to p- make sure my team is mentally prepared. So th- I'm trying to speak to any owner of any company. Yeah. Like if you were in an industry that your people were bleeding with their fingers because they're working too many hours, like that's a redo for me that I want to do mm-hmm. is focus on hours worked, which means hire more people earlier, train more people faster, and limit hours, period. Mm-hmm. And enough's enough. If we did our best, we did our, our best is good enough. Um, but there's lots of studies about how and I think, yeah, and, performance falls you know, when you work too many hours. Yeah. And my brain kind of goes, it splits down the middle, right? Um, all in all, I love the idea and I think it's super important. Um, and I agree with it. Part of me. Well, I'm glad could, because it's my choice. Cut to, <laughs> it's been blessed. <laughs> approved. You can move forward with it. Um, part of me thinks, okay, so people are going to hear that and there's going to be people that are um, immediately turned off because they they know for sure that they can't get their job done in the 40 hours. And so now I'm going to ha- still have to get the job done because, you know, bosses are not going to like lower the expectation. I still have to get my job done or they're going to be upset. Now I'm just not getting paid for it. Right. So that's like I can. He- this is the thought process my mind goes through. The other side of my brain says, man, what an opportunity to force efficiency, mm-hmm. which is which is like I have just really been obsessed with efficiency for, I don't know, probably my whole life, but really the last two years of just like there is so much room for improvement and developing better practices and being really efficient and how much time is truly wasted in a day. Um, less working remotely. Huh? Less working remotely. Less and, time is wasted. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's totally different, but I, but I, I think it's but point is, I think it's a very interesting space to come from. And I definitely think that it'll test the, well, it'll, it'll bring challenges for sure. Cause I Good. think there's a lot of different. Well, here, of here's thoughts. something I want everyone to be really clear about is whether people liked it or not, everyone adapted last year. 100%. Change was mandatory. And Absolutely. so. But what is the hardest thing for most organizations to do? Yeah, yeah, change. change. Yeah. So my favorite thing, if I were to pick anything about 2020, was the necessity of change management, uh, and the companies that are, and people that that changed faster, adapted faster, prospered more. Right. Mm-hmm. The people that sat with their thumbs, uh, you know, sat on their thumbs and waited for the world to come back to normal and said, "This will be over by Fourth July." They suffered greatly. I mean, so in a redo year, what you look at is, hey guys, uh, change is mandatory and it's good, and not embracing it is sticking your head in the ground like an ostrich. It really is. So the, it, I think we even referenced the "Who Moved My Cheese" book mm-hmm. at least once last year, yeah, maybe twice. But like, look for looking for those. There's a lot of people that 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 uh, bridge the gap. Maybe they lost a few hours of of work, but. They went out instantaneously to to do a secondary, you know, side gig, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm not going to say his name, but I've got a good friend of mine who is a pilot, and uh, this guy was so get this. So he works uh, Southwest Airlines and the Air Force, um, and he, like it's kind of a dream job, right? He's the he's he's definitely the best looking dude in the school. Like he's the fighter pilot, right? I mean, like, who is who's right? the We're friend? We're not talking about him. Who's the uh, friend? But, but this guy, sorry, Randy uh, Rouse. When, when Southwest, exactly. So when it, uh, it's one of the funny things, I always tell my wife, I say, Christy, you can't hang out with him by yourself. You like, I'm just sorry. Uh, I'm inferior to this man. So <laughs> this, anyways, he's a great guy. And so when Southwest Airlines was, did a great job of choosing not to lay people off by giving the employees choices of fewer hours as a group so you can keep everybody. He was a guy that's pretty well off and, uh, and he's had the Air Force job too, right? So it's that's like, really hey, I raised my hand, take me back to next to no hour. So I don't remember exactly, but call it four hours a month or right. six hours a month. Is what I he, think that's their deal. They have to work, you know, right, to, stay, min- empl- right, to stay employed and for all benefits. the benefits. Yeah. But so he went back to literally the minimum to help out others because he knew it was okay. Well, of all things, I didn't even know this was even possible. The Air Force cut back his hours a couple months later. 
like he's he's not he was he's not a uh so i don't know if he falls into the active duty or the reservist so i don't know like i'm I'm, i don't want to overspeak but for whatever no, reason, I'll look it up. Yep. <laughs> for whatever reason, the Air Force cut back his hours too, right? So he now has to deal with way less income. So he already took almost 50% cut because of Southwest Airlines. Now he's taking a real deal, additional 75% cut from the Air wow. Force job. And uh, I remember, and this goes back to staying humble and hungry. And it's two of my favorite words put together is stay humble and hungry. With zero pride and ego, the next day, he sent a text to about eight of his buddies. I was lucky to be on the thing as, as well. And he said, hey, if any of you guys need any home improvements, I'll take care of it. Let me know. I want to make some money. Right? It. Like Love literally it. the next day, there was a text out to probably eight of us. And, you know, um, a couple, I needed some home improvements done. Well, like and, I, and I hired you know, him on the spot. I was like, dude, I'd rather pay you than some random guy. Absolutely. You know, and uh, Absolutely. I know a couple of my other buddies did too. And what I loved about it was there was no ego, no pride and on either side, right? It's like, it wasn't weird. It's like this no, dude wait, yeah. just wants to take care of his family. He wants to be a productive member of society. He changed on the second, like the next day. And it's something I we can all learn from. It's super that. impressive to me. And, uh, and then and what the a great, side, I mean, and it's such a great, uh, skill set to have is if you, you know, could swing a hammer because dude, like you talked about in the beginning, people were hyper home aware of their homes. Yes. I mean, because dude. we're spending a lot of time in those yeah, houses. We can all swing hammers. We can all dig ditches. We just Very choose true. not to because God forbid we do hard work. Right. Um, <laughs> and, and, but I love that. I think it's such yeah, a great really cool. reminder for people if, if that the world comes your way a little bit faster than you care to care, just change. Just yeah, change. Um, uh, and by the way, the, the moral, the ending of that story, while he was working on my project, he got notified that he's back to 300 days next year with the Air Force. So he's, he's, he's already back working again. He's doing great. Oh, but, but like that 30 days was, he just found jobs. He just made it work. And talk about how easy it would have been to just sit now, here on, on, sit not on to butt. tell anyone because of pride. Knee, oh my right. God, right? Like, I'm just going to like, sit on my butt and wait for it. And I, and, and, simultaneously feel really bad for myself for 30 days yep. and womp, 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 right? Um, one of the girls on our team um, started ship shopping. Um, one, because she found... Uh, you she say found herself, shipped shopping? Shipped shopping. Is that one of the apps? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. a grocery delivery service. And, oh, got it. Um, you That's know, not the one Chrissy uses. Single, Which one does she use? Uh, I think Chrissy uses Instacart. Most, Instacart, that's right. That's yeah. the devil too. If you don't know the name of it, it means it's not popping up on your bill near enough. So uh, she good. No, no, no. This, this, it just fuzzes out when I look at it. I, like, I just see the packages showing up. It's like, oh my God. Um, but, you know, she's a single girl, lives by herself and talk about cabin fever. So a lot of the reason that she decided to start ship shopping was to get out of the house, but then realized that, you know, there's so many people, elderly people specifically that weren't able to get out and do their grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. So that made her feel really good that, you know, cause she kind of did struggle with, Oh, am I being irresponsible by being out in public when I shouldn't be? Am I putting myself mm -hmm. at risk? And, um, the reality is, she said, I'd rather me be out than these sweet elderly people that truly can't do their grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. And so um, anyway, just really cool. You know, like that was a great use of time. Yep, that's, great that's way so to true. fill the time. All right. So I feel like there's a lot of content today and I feel like this is going to go into a second episode. So let, let's go ahead and, and take a break for a second. Okay. Um, how can people ask us questions? So ask us questions at sigmundsense at gmail.com. Um, that's our email address. Or you can send us DMs to any of our social pages, Facebook, Instagram, um, any of that. Cool. And uh, come back for round two of the same subject. Absolutely. Uh, trying to figure out how to have a good redo here in 2021. We'll see you at the next episode of Sigmund Sense. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.